episode of Behind the Wheel. My name's Nick, I'm the Senior Curator of the National Motor Museum. We're inside the, well, I'm inside uh, the workshop of the museum and on the hoist is one of our most significant uh, racing vehicles uh, in our collection. It's a 1971 Chrysler Charger Valiant, or Valiant Charger E38, uh, road track version. So uh, this is basically the uh, hardtop uh, two-door version of the VH Valiant. Uh, and this particular model was race prepared for Leo Gagan, or Joe Hagen, however you want to say it, um, for the Hardy Throto 500, so the Bathurst 500 in 1971. So as Chrysler were preparing to transition from the VG to the VH model uh, of Valiant, they realized that there was nothing uh, that they'd prepared for basically uh, to fit in with the growing trend for sporty coupes. Uh, and so that's when they started developing the Charger. Uh, the original uh, code name, I guess, while they were developing the model was the Rebel, uh, which was uh, basically borrowed from an AMC uh, model, one of their uh, Northern American uh, rival manufacturers. Um, and uh, yeah, so they used the 105 inch uh, short wheelbase version of the VG. Um, they borrowed the hardtop lines from uh, uh, the Chrysler by Chrysler coupe and um, they left the refinement of the vehicle in the hands of uh, uh, a trusty race car driver they had, Leo Gagan, um, who basically did a lot of the early testing and he was eventually to race uh, the road track version uh, very successfully. In, um, uh, in the Australian Touring Car Championship. So this vehicle, as I mentioned, was prepared for the 1971 Australian Touring Car Championship Series. Uh, you see the stickers down the side, they say Hardy Ferrero 500. The vehicle didn't actually compete in Bathurst that year. Uh, it was prepared for Bathurst, uh, as were four vehicles uh, for Gagan. He actually used another one, um, which was later crashed, no longer exists. Um, this one was used later in the series, uh, and it also was crashed at Phillip Island in 1971. Um, the damage it sustained was so bad that it had to be heavily rebuilt. Um, so basically towards the end of the, oh, at the end of the series, when they were changing over to the next series of Valiant Chargers, um, uh, rather than scrap the vehicle, as often would happen with something like this, they decided to pull out the roll cage uh, and uh, probably fit a brand new engine um, or, or a second-hand engine uh, and uh, get it ready for regular road-going use. Uh, it was sold to a Chrysler executive. We know the engine's probably not the original because we actually used the help of police forensics um, who uncovered the engine number that's on it because we couldn't find it on there. It had actually been ground off. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we haven't actually been able to match them up yet, but we don't think it's the original engine from the vehicle. But anyway, speaking of the engine, let's lift the bonnet, have a look underneath in our mechanic nine book and talk to you a little bit about what made the Chrysler Valiant so special. All right, here we are under the bonnet. How are you, Mitch? Hey Nigel. How you going mate? What can you tell us about the Hemi? Uh, the Hemi, this is a 265. So one of the uh, two different breeds of Hemi that they had. One was a 215, which is a three and a half litre. 265 being the 4.3 litre. So the bigger of the two, uh, which would have made it ideal for racing. And obviously uh, this one's got slight modifications with the three triple Webers on it, which would have given a plenty of horsepower down the, uh, around the racetrack makes it quite a grunty sort of car to drive and um, quite lively as well so um, as we've said before this one probably isn't the original one so it's probably not got a cam that uh, the original race engine would have ever run in it which would have made it a little bit more lumpy at idle than what this one has got so i think she's pretty well much stock except for the carburetors um, but this would have been the configuration that they would have run um, in through the australian touring car championship so Close to 300 horses, I believe, and uh, you did fire it up before for us. It does sound really nice. Can we take it for a drive? We can certainly take it for a drive. It is quite a sprightly little thing, so let's do it. Cool, let's jump in. Here we are inside the Charger, and Nigel, just uh, get in a little close. You can just spot the pedal. Promotes the fact that it's got disc brakes. That's only on the front. The rear is the nine-inch drums, and Nigel got his uh, hand on the gear knob. But that four-speed transmission, as we said, also non-original. They originally came out in three speed. Fairly plain dash with some uh, cool 70s graphics. And uh, it's been a wet day today, so we're definitely 
not going to be pushing this car to its limits, which are very high, but there you have it. 1971 Valiant Charger Road Track E38.